Struck. It seems like you can't have a conversation these days about retro gaming without eventually talking about how expensive the cartridges have become, especially for the Super Nintendo. The average game goes for over $20 according to PriceCharting.com, that's just ridiculous. I even made a video about picking up cheap SNES games a couple years ago, but it's totally outdated now. Even stuff like Plock and Tetris Attack are going for $15 to $20 each and climbing. So I thought I'd make an updated video, or more accurately, a list of the best games you can still get for under $10. Obviously this is completely completely subjective, it being a list and all, but please don't let that stop you from leaving a comment about how I'm a monkey's uncle, that would really make my day. 13. Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City. Right away you might be thinking, wait, what? And yeah, this is actually a pretty good game, an exploration-based platformer starring Michael Jordan and his super-powered balls. There's five gigantic stages where you find keys, unlock new areas, rescue kidnapped players, and dunk on enemies. The premise is pretty ridiculous, but believe it or not, this is a pretty well-made game, so if you're into platformers that make you explore a little bit, you should check this one out. 12. Boxing Legends of the Ring, otherwise known as Chavez 2, is a game you usually see like three or four copies for every time you go to a used game store, but this is actually one of the better 16-bit boxing games out there. No, it's not as good as Super Punch-Out, but it holds its own by implementing classic boxing strategy elements as well as a fantastic visual style. You also get to fight as guys like Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran. I know not everyone's into boxing, but even if you're not, this game still has its strengths. Eleven. Adam's Family Values is a top-down adventure game where you play as Uncle Fester trying to rescue baby Pubert. In addition to the adventure-style combat, there's some RPG elements here too, like upgrading your attack, your equipment, and your life bar. Sadly, there's no battery save here, only passwords, but still, this is a solid game that you wouldn't expect to be that good, especially if you remember Fester's quest for NES. If you're into games like this, Adam's Family Values is by far the cheapest option out there. 10. Hyperzone is a fast-paced Mode 7 rail shooter that came out early in the SNES lifespan and has managed to stay a cheap cartridge even with prices going crazy with almost every other game. Some people may be turned off by the visuals here, which can be, let's face it, downright ugly at times, but this is still a perfectly fine shooter that can be really challenging at times. There is not much to the gameplay, what you see is what you get here and that's it. No other game modes or options or anything, but still, sometimes it's fun to just sit down and make stuff go boom. Nice. Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball. Come on, you knew I'd bring this game up. This is by far the best baseball game on the system and one of the best sports games ever made. And even if you're not that into baseball, you'll still have a good time playing this one, whether it's a 162 game season or a home run derby. It's easy to get a grasp of both pitching and hitting, and the art style has aged really well. This is one of my favorite games ever. Eight. Super Empire Strikes Back. Uh, you could probably pick from any of the three Super Star Wars games on the SNES since they're all pretty cheap, but I've had the most fun with this one. Maybe it's because it's the best movie of the three? I don't know. But yeah, this game is infamously difficult, easily one of the hardest games on the Super Nintendo. The enemy patterns can be hard to grasp, the respawning here is insane, and some of the boss fights are downright ridiculous. Still, it's just cool to hear that music in 16-bit form, and it's cool to play as Luke and Han and Chewie. Seven. Tiny Toon Adventures Buster Bust Loose. This is one cartridge from my earlier cheap SNES games video that hasn't changed much in price for whatever reason. It's a side-scroller made by Konami that features all sorts of bonus games that add a lot of variety, and it also represents the source material very well. I know this game has kind of like a childlike vibe to it, but it's definitely a worthwhile playthrough and a well-made game. Six. SimCity may be seen as a pretty limited game today, but sometimes it's still nice and relaxing to just sit back and build a city while that tranquil soundtrack washes over you. This is an easy pick for this list, it's always been super cheap, and it's a great challenge to try and legitimately build a city. Of course, if you'd rather put in the money code and just build an entire city made out of airports, that's cool too. Five. Pilot Wings is another really challenging title where you fly biplanes and jetpacks through obstacle courses, skydive through rings, and eventually make stuff go boom with a helicopter. Yeah, it's tough, but the physics engine here is consistent and reliable, and it's one of the great 100% titles in the SNES library. Getting perfect scores across the board is a hell of a challenge, but it can be done. Like SimCity, Pilot Wings has always been a cheap cartridge, and similarly, it also has kind of a relaxing vibe to it, despite how tough it is. It's well worth playing today, and should be a part of anyone's SNES collection. Four. 
Street Fighter 2, while the Turbo, Super, and Alpha 2 editions have gone up in price, the original SNES port has leveled off a bit, and while the other versions of this game are better, the original still has great visual and sound design, consistent controls, and is easily one of the better 16-bit fighting games out there. If speed is your style, there's Chun-Li, or Ken. If power is more your thing, there's Zangief or Blanca. If you want a balance between the two, there's Ryu and Guile. And there's also two wild cards like Dalsim and E-Honda. The first Street Fighter 2 still holds up great today, both as a single player and two player fighting game. Three. Top Gear. I remember standing at the rental store one day thinking about how tired I was of all the same old stuff I kept renting over and over, so I decided to take a chance on this racing game I'd never heard of. Turns out that was one of the best decisions I'd ever made in my young life at that point because Top Gear is an exhilarating arcade style racing game with a wide variety of tracks and an incredible sense of speed. Yeah, the split screen that's there even as you play in single player is kind of annoying, but it's at least fun to try and make the computer's life hell. Top Gear is one of my all time favorites. Two. Goof Troop is another game based on a TV show, this time being a top-down action game that's one of the best multiplayer games on the system. Most of the gameplay is built around clever and intuitive puzzles where you both have to work together to progress through the game, so it really feels super rewarding the further you get into the game. Even if you're not big into Disney, this is a fantastic two-player game and a perfectly good single-player game as well. One. F-Zero is not only one of the best launch titles ever, but it's one of the best racing games ever made. This is an easy choice for number one on this list, because not only is it cheap, but it's really easy to find whether it be online or in used game stores. And of course, it's one of the best SNES games out there because of its flexible difficulty, variety of tracks and cars, and memorable music. This game sold like a gazillion copies for a reason, and if you don't own a copy for yourself, you should remedy that sooner than later. Alright, that's it for games under $10. Now, I know that if I simply expanded the price threshold to $15, that opens up a whole new echelon of games like Tetris Attack, Killer Instinct, Star Fox, Phantom 2040, X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, Total Carnage, Prince of Persia, on and on. The thing is though, prices for those games are steadily increasing, so I wanted to pick $10 games that have mostly stabilized in price over the years, and I think these 13 that I picked are about as good as you're gonna find in that price range. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and have a good rest of your day.